Welcome to Our Family Stories, a podcast by Global Peace Women. We started this podcast to share about the stories, the lessons that we've learned from the experiences in our families, the good times and the bad. And we've realized peace really does begin in the home. We hope you enjoy this next episode where we talk about our brothers. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Ashwarya Chaturvedi. I'm from India and I'm a practicing lawyer and uh, I've also been working closely with uh, Global Peace Women. Since 2018, I run an NGO Nirman, which is uh, which works towards uh, the education and holistic development of underprivileged children in India. So yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. We're super happy to have you. Mm-hmm. Shraddha? Hi, everybody. My name is Shraddha. Um, I'm currently working with Global Peace Women as a social media content creator and data analyst, and I am very excited about I think episode three today with about siblings. Okay. Anu? Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Anu Lama and currently I am a writer for Global Peace Women and it's exciting to be here. And I'm also excited to talk about my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all yeah. are. <laughs> I'm Hanako. Um, I work with Global Peace Women as the organizational development. Um, director and I've had the privilege to meet all of you and get to know more about you over the last year it's been such a pleasure and uh, I can't wait to talk about our siblings I guess we can expand it to brothers and sisters but uh, today we all have brothers and I thought would it be nice to talk about them because you know we don't always get to talk about them so uh, I'll start with a simple share Um, this is a story from Cameroon, I think. It's from Lillian. She's a GPWLA uh, current fellow. Uh, and um, she has a moving story of how her brother has uh, kind of played a surrogate father to her. So, okay. Any initial reactions or thoughts? I think it's a really moving story. Mm. Um, it's interesting. It kind of it's kind of a throwback to our last session. We talked about um, surrogate families. So sometimes maybe we don't have the perfect parents or the perfect family, but somehow. There's a way that people fill in, um, in in many ways. This is, I guess, an example. I didn't mean it to be, (laughs) but um, um, it seems like that. Okay, so Lillian shared uh, a simple example or a simple story of um, how even when her brother was away, he would call her and make sure he would check in on her. 
kind of edited this story down, but in the original script, uh, she said, you know, when she was, when he was abroad, then he would make sure that he would call her. He would even stop by to visit, make special visits to make sure that she knew that he was on his mind. Um, so do, maybe we can think a moment, uh, special stories we have with our brothers. Um, some of us have olders. Aishwarya has both older and younger. I only have younger. So let's dig back a little bit and see if we have a story um, that's you know special like the one that Lillian shared. So mine isn't as um, iconic as Lillian's. It's just a simple memory that I have with my younger brother. Um, being that I'm the older child, a lot of the times I'm the one who takes who helps him take care of what he needs for school, for, um, I don't know, his extracurricular activities and all of that. And one day my brother came up to me and he started talking about college. And then <laughs> he was like, oh, like he calls me Bidzu, which is another form of older sister in Nepali. He came up to me and he said, Bidzu, like, I'm gonna be going away for college. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you already made, that, made up that mind. And he was like, I mean, you never know. And then I started asking him a bunch of questions. I was like, oh, well, do you think you'll be able to do your own laundry? Or <laughs> will you be able to, to handle your own homework assignments? Like, remember to do them on time. He's like, yeah, I'll be grown up by then. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. okay. Which is really funny because he doesn't do any of that right now. <laughs> He's very spoiled. Um, and so I was just asking him questions and questions just to see if he could become independent or not. And in his mind, he's already ready. He's like, I'm ready to go to that step right now overnight. And so we were talking and throughout the night, he just kept on asking me questions about college and what it was like. And um, I remember how like, he's, he's the type of person who's very shy in front of his friends uh, or someone that he knows, unless if it's family. And so with him being very spoiled and whatnot, he, to this day, he's 14. Oh no, I'm sorry, he's 15. Um, he still gives everyone in my family uh, kisses on the cheek. And so so when he was asking me questions, I asked him, well, Stephen, are you gonna be, still give me kisses when you're still in college? And he, <laughs> he thought about it <laughs> before saying yes. He thought about it almost as if he was gonna say no. And so I put on this like shocked face just to see what, how he would react and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah, like don't worry about it. And so just thinking of like how Lillian had 11, 11 brothers. Um, I only have, or 11 siblings. I only have one brother, but he's basically a whole package. <laughs> he's a whole roller coaster ride where there's moments where it's like very happy. There's moments where we just fighting, even though we have like what, eight or nine year age gap. Oh, wow. um, in front of my mom. Well, my mom always says that we're like Tom and Jerry. We always bicker, <laughs> even though I'm like the I'm supposed to be the mature one. It's just he knows how to get to me, <laughs> and I know how to get to him. Sibling, yes. And so it's just just a simple memory that came up in my mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna still give you kisses. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I don't know if he said that just to make me happy. <laughs> But we'll see. you have to call him on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't forget, you promised. <laughs> yeah, that that is so sweet. <laughs> but uh, uh, while you were talking about your brother, I was just thinking, I, I am the youngest one in my family, so I was just thinking that I've been so spoiled by my brothers. <laughs> so they've spoiled me a lot, and. Uh, how many do you have? Um, I have one, one, and I have many cousins, mm -hmm. <laughs> brother cousins. So all of them have spoiled me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, one specific memory that comes in my mind is, I guess, uh, when you were in school. So uh, my brother used to come and pick me up. So. And all my brothers and all my cousin brothers, we all studied in the same school. Mm. So, whenever, <laughs> so whenever they used to come and pick me up, I would always have three and four brothers walking down. 
<laughs> Straight and I'd be the smallest one there. <laughs> so that is very fond memory. And I think so even when I was a little, I think I have been very dependent on my brother, my brothers. <laughs> and then when he went to the army, I was like, oh, I do not know anything. I don't know how to fix this router and internet thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it is all of that. What did it feel like to have so many older brothers? Did they like, they were your protectors or like, did it feel like you were safe or? I've never had that experience. Oh yes, it definitely felt so protected. <laughs> they are like, they were like my body. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. yeah. Don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah, and even uh, in Bihar, which is like we we celebrate Bhai Tika, so it's like we celebrate our brothers and we worship something, some th things like that. And even then, I have like three or four brothers lined up, and then I get so <laughs> it's nice to have that. <laughs> Yeah, and then in some years, I think uh, one of my cousin brother was missing and it would be so sad mm -hmm. <laughs> because he would not be there. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm vicariously living how it would be to have older brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think having older brother is like being spoiled mm -hmm. and also fighting. <laughs> not fighting, but arguing. So we'll have to talk about some of those arguments in the next round of, of, of discussion. <laughs> Go ahead, Aishwarya. It's so wonderful to listen to all their stories. Yeah, so uh, uh, you mentioned uh, that in Lillian's story that how her brother ensured that even when, while he was away, he made sure that uh, she knew that he, uh, she was always on his mind. So I've experienced something very similar. So uh, back in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. when I was graduating from law school, uh, I wanted to go for my master's actually at that point in time. So I, I had applied to all these schools uh, in the US and uh, uh, in Europe as well. And I got through uh, like a couple of them, like uh, Cornell and Berkeley and uh, University of Pennsylvania. Uh, however, like when I spoke to one of my cousins who's also a lawyer and he has also been a, a guiding force in my life. Mm -hmm. And again, with my brother, I felt that, uh, you know, in a, a profession like law, it's always better if you gain some experience uh, and then go for your master's because mm -hmm. it's only then that you can leverage the degree. Mm -hmm. So, however, uh, taking that decision was tough because mentally I had made up my mind that I was going to, uh, let's say, Cornell or Berkeley and my next year was going to be like that. So uh, after graduating, I had to take like an off of uh, say three, four months. And uh, it was a new thing for me because uh, never in my life uh, till then had I taken a break, so to speak. Uh, but and during that time, uh, my brother was at Cornell. He was pursuing his master's in public administration. So he wasn't here. And my older brother, that is. So uh, it was a difficult phase for me because uh, I didn't know what to do with my time. I didn't know how to proceed with my career. So uh, my brother used to send me these voice notes, you know, time and again uh, about how, what is the meaning of life and what is the purpose of life and how we should not be demotivated and how it was just the start of my career. And of course, he ensured uh, that he called me, you know, uh, let's say very often in the week, actually, we, we are very, very close and he would video call me as well. And actually, he's he's one of uh, the main reasons that I started Nirman, because he knew about my inclination uh, to you know serve the society and my interest in teaching uh, little kids. So he was like, uh, you know, uh, till the time you start practicing law, why don't you you know pursue uh, this passion of yours? And he really pushed me actually to uh, start my NGO Nirman. And at the same time, my younger younger brother, he was in school at the time. I believe he was in the ninth or 10th grade. And uh, he's actually eight years younger to me, but very, very wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get along really well. We are like best friends. So, you know, he would encourage me. And then he would also ask me to chill and take it easy. So, <laughs> uh, 
yeah with the with the help of both of them you know i really sail through those have supported me and similarly while while i was at cornell my grandparents but both of them were a solid rock to me you know they knew what i was going through what we were going through as a family but uh, both of them you know uh, were huge emotional support for me yeah there, there's something really special i mean we're talking about brothers but i think siblings in general right there's this um unspoken understanding um that you share with siblings so in that way you're able to be uh like you're saying an emotional support even a moral support it sounds like to each other it's actually really interesting how that works because even though Stephen and I are so apart in age um I still find myself talking to him about certain things more than I talk to my parents about mm-hmm. and same with him as well and I think it's just that mutual understanding but deep down that like we're basically you know we're tied together no matter what um within our our um immediate family mm-hmm. like once our parents are no longer here like it's just us who have each other and so in a way i think he understands that which is why he's able to share a lot with me and vice versa i think you just put to words something that i didn't realize until now. <laughs> why siblings are are so um precious <laughs> um right there there's a gift our parents gave to us um even after our parents might go which is why i wish i had more <laughs> but i guess one is enough and one is good of course with my cousins as well <laughs> yeah cousins too right i think we're all talking about um our extended family and cousins now those are those are brother cousins you call them right under brother um i i wanted to ask so uh with with uh oh well, let's go to the next round <laughs> we talked about happy moments um and alluded to some of the challenging moments uh if we could think back to some of the bigger fights that we've had and maybe um of course probably the reason might be a little mundane but then what we learn from it you know did we learn about um how to compromise did we learn a little bit about how um brothers think a little different from us uh those kind of things let's think back to maybe a conflict moment and what we learn from it i think uh, my because i'm the youngest my elder brothers they all have i think more sense of responsibility than me mm. <laughs> so i'm more like oh it's okay uh, so there is he is more responsible one and i'm like the one who is not so responsible <laughs> so i think when i was uh, a teenager i guess um i had gone so it's this story sounds like it's such a teenager story but <laughs> so mundane but uh, i think i had gone somewhere with my friends and it is a bit late when i returned <laughs> so we had a bit of conflict when i returned and he was like oh you so stayed up so late <laughs> why are you so late and then we had a bit of fight but <laughs> so when so when we were talking about conflict i was just going back to that He stayed up for you. He waited for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah. Yeah, and I think in that time my uh, uh my mother was not home. So he was the one who had to make dinner. <laughs> Probably that's and when you didn't come late. home for dinner. <laughs> I was late. <laughs> so <laughs> like a surrogate parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is uh, one of the conflicts that came on my mind. Mm-hmm. I think conflicts with him was just like that only on small things. <laughs> Now when I came yeah, back I, up, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now when I came back I think I am I understand why you say that because Uh, my little cousin sister she stays with us and i'm like oh don't stay too late <laughs> mm. <laughs> come back <home> early <laughs> so 
You have to kind of be in their shoes to 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 be able to relate. <laughs> um, I was the youngest on both sides of the family, my dad's side and my mom's side. So I was the youngest child. So growing up, um, within the years that I lived in Nepal, all of my cousins were a lot older. Um, they were, I, I think our biggest age difference is like up to 13 years um, with the oldest one. And with the youngest one, it's like seven or eight. It's very similar to mine and Steve or my brothers. Um, and so growing up in Nepal, I had, I was the youngest, so I was a spoiled one. But then when we came to America a few years later, Stephen was born, um, which is my brother. And so I guess because I had that like spoiled habit instilled in me at a young age, I always, I always acted as the old like domineering sibling and so I would get my brother to do what he wanted or sorry do what I wanted you wanted and so I was like the leader of our two-pack group um and so recently I think it was a few weeks ago I can't remember exactly what the fight was about but it was a situation where I was being stubborn and I wouldn't I decided I wouldn't talk to him at all for like and who knows how long until he apologized um but with him being like the less short tempered and um, easily forgets what we thought what we thought about instantly, um, he started talking to me. But I had told him beforehand, like I'm not going to talk to you until you apologize and you know what you did was wrong and everything. But with him forgetting, he didn't realize that I had said that. He just completely forgot, and so he would just keep trying to talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, and I wouldn't budge at all. And this is when I realized I was so stubborn was because in the end, my mom had to come up to me and ask me what had happened because she sensed me not talking to him, but him trying to talk to me. And then at one point he had also complained to her. Um, and so I guess long story short, I was mad at him. Um, he didn't realize I was mad at him <laughs> until my mom told him that I was mad at him. And so he eventually apologized, but only to only so that I would talk to him again. <laughs> he didn't apologize because he realized what he had done, but just to get me talking again. Yeah, I like how he called. He pulled the mom card. <laughs> um, sometimes you do need parents to facilitate. So, uh, I have I have a, a story with my older brother uh, that uh, that I can think of right now. So. Uh, he was probably, this was years ago, and he was probably in the ninth grade, and I was maybe in the sixth or seventh grade. And uh, my parents had gifted me this new MP4 player uh, for my birthday. And it was used to be a, a really fancy thing at the time. And my my brother, actually, he's he's really forgetful, you know. He's, uh, he's not the most uh, uh, careful and organized person. So uh, uh, as a child, I used to dread giving my things to him. Uh, I still do, but now he's married, so I, I'm I'm a lot safer. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, at that time, so he, he was in a boarding school at that time, and he had to go for some winter camp or something, and he wanted to take my MP4 player, and I did not want to lend it to him because I was like, you're gonna lose it, and you know this is a gift and everything, and we had like a huge fight over it, and. You know, he was like, you you don't want to share your stuff. How will you learn? And I was like, you are going to lose it and you're not ca careful enough. So we, the, yeah, that was a conflict. And uh, we've, we've actually had uh, such conflicts uh, until very recently, you know, like he, he always keeps losing his stuff. And uh, I'm always like that, you know, be a little more organized. And but yeah, I mean, the end of that story, we've had similar uh, fights over a television remote as well. I mean, things like that also. That, you know, I want to watch this. And he's like, no, I want to watch this. And you never want to share. But yeah, to, uh, the gist of the story is that uh, he, uh, because I had uh, a sibling, I learned how to share. Uh, that, you know, uh, materialistic things are not as important. You've got to learn. And, and I hope that because of me, he learned to be more careful <laughs> with things. <laughs> I really hope. But uh, you can yeah, so I learned wife. to share. <laughs> So I learned to share because of him and uh, he or another uh, good quality that he has is that whenever we have uh, a fight, uh, as Shraddha said, I'm also uh, like, I'm not very, I'm not quick tempered, but uh, if 
as and when i get angry i don't let go of it very easily so but uh, the good quality about him is that uh, you know whenever we have a fight or anything he's always he doesn't come and apologize of course because because he's older than me but he's very gracious to always come and you know just sort of make up and be like that you know okay let's forget about it and just have a fun chat so yeah that's those are two things that i've learned from him that you know first to share and secondly that you know just just make up don't even if you fight just make up quickly yeah i think um it's so nice in the sibling relationships that you learn these real real lessons right real social skills <laughs> that i think with friends you don't have the luxury to make those kind of huge fights or or even mistakes but with siblings because you have the blood tie you're afforded a little bit more right you you can fight about um things you can fight about the remote you can fight about being right and wrong but in the end because you're tied by blood um it's better to figure out a way i mean i i, I do know that there's situations where people don't make up but it, it's uh I think you you figure out how to make up. That's also a skill. Um, as as everyone's talking, I'm like, yeah, I did learn how to let go, um, how to say sorry to the hard things, um, how how to check in even if it seems hard. Right? Sometimes after a fight, there's this like frozen zone, and you're like, oh, who gets who has to talk first? No, but I'm in the right. I don't I don't have to talk to him. but then you're like oh but the relationship's more important he's more important than my grudge all right fine here i go i'm going in <laughs> you make the joke or you bring him the the treat or something and you figure out what works these are all really good skills um that translate to our relationships outside the family and even i mean in in global peace women we talk about peace building right these are all real peace building lessons i think <laughs> um in the field peace building lessons <laughs> maybe let's build on that if we have a couple other lessons on on conflict resolution that we might have from our 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 siblings that would be cool to kind of list some of these out um just a thought that came up when you were talking about that um So I realized over time that you know it doesn't really matter if you're older or younger um just experience of like with conflicts uh, with everything um I've realized that it really takes a lot to just learn to let go and also to learn your mistakes and apologize to what you know for what ha- had happened Um, so in that sense, it doesn't matter. Just because I'm the, the older one doesn't mean I always have to forgive immediately. <laughs> you know, think, oh, he's younger; he can make mistakes. Um, and just because he's younger doesn't give him the right to be like, oh, she's older, so she has to forgive me. So I'll just say sorry for now, <laughs> type of thing. It's just it doesn't matter who's older, who's younger, as long as you learn the lesson of, mm-hmm. you know, creating. meaningful apologies or or learning from the experience um cool um before we close out this section i wanted to ask since we all have brothers uh any like specific traits about men boys that we've learned from them that we have found useful in our interaction with other uh men or boys uh i think i'm going to go first <laughs> but i think uh i think uh definitely being being more understanding you know that that character uh being understanding and kind of being like a mediator so whenever there is argument he's like the one person who says like okay i have to listen to this and then that many kinds of mediates and doesn't lose temper that much not as emotional <laughs> yeah so that one understanding and be more understanding that one quality i think mm-hmm. for my brother <laughs> yeah and also the sense of responsibilities mm-hmm. yeah it, that's big it's true 
Yeah. Other ladies? Yeah, I think what I've uh, realized uh, about men in gen general with my experience uh, with my brothers is that uh, it's always better to, you know, speak clearly and not just drop like emotional hints or maybe even throw an emotional tantrum or something that uh, I'm not uh, stereotyping, but like uh, a lot of women, uh, including myself, tend to do that, that you are so emotionally overwhelmed by a situation that uh, you don't you know, for, for some time you don't talk logically. Mm. So, uh, but uh, with both my brothers, I've realized that, you know, they they think very clearly uh, when there's a conflict, they speak very clearly. And uh, like, uh, uh, even with my father, so to speak, I've seen that, you know, uh, he's usually very calm in such situations. And uh, it's always, I, I've learned that it's always better to, you know, talk out a situation mm. rather than fight over it. Or even if you've had a fight, just, you know, uh, it's always better to talk it out rather than just, you know, holding on to a grudge or something or, you know, just throwing a tantrum. So, yeah, that's that's what I've learned. I would just like to go off of Aisharia, too. That's um, essentially what I've learned with my younger brother is I can't expect him to understand my feelings without letting him know, um, mm -hmm. even though sometimes I may have already hinted at him. Um, and it could just be the fact that he's younger, he, he hasn't completely um, emotionally matured yet, or or that he's a he's a man or he's a boy. Um, but just communication is a big factor, and not just with um, one gender, but with all genders. Mm -hmm. And that's just it, it's something that I'm still working on. And so, just take it, I guess, uh, day by day. <laughs> okay, cool. It's nice talking about my brother, our brothers. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Make sure to subscribe and tune in next time.